Tesla has spent the last two years focusing on the Model 3 and Model Y ramp up, Elon Musk also hasn't given up on the Model S and Model X, and instead has doubled down on these vehicles, refreshing Tesla's lineup with high-powered plaid performance models that put supercars to shame. But during Tesla's conference call earlier this year, Elon Musk stated that no new products would be released this year in 2022. Investors were taken aback in shock, thinking that this must be the result of new delays that could be worse than imagined and would hurt Tesla's early first mover advantage into new categories. Elon Musk's justification was seemingly ignored as he reasoned that launching new products would actually hurt Tesla's sales. But this counterintuitively actually makes a lot of sense. Tesla is already highly constrained on its Model Y production with demand far outpacing supply. In some cases, it could take up to a year for customers to receive delivery. But as the chip shortage alleviates, batteries remain the real bottleneck in the system. Without batteries, it makes no sense to sacrifice, for instance, 10 or more Model Ys to try and deliver a single semi-truck. What investors are missing is that the focus for 2022 is specifically targeted at mitigating battery bottlenecks in future years. Elon Musk says, we're going to move to just truly massive scale, scale that no company has ever achieved in the history of humanity. And so Tesla is planning to ramp up 4680 battery output to new levels this year in order to help satisfy Model S, 3X, and Y demand so that the company can unleash a massive wave of new products in 2023. Elon Musk expects one kick-ass product after another and some cool stuff they haven't even talked about yet. So this will be a game changer for Tesla and will finally be the true disruption where EVs will start to make a dent in ICE vehicle sales. This wave is going to start with the new Tesla Roadster, which Elon Musk has confirmed is on pace for 2023. While the vehicle has been delayed before, now there's a brand new factory with allocated space to produce this vehicle and fresh battery capacity to power it. While the Model S Plaid is already able to crush any production car in a race, Roadster will be even faster. Elon Musk has promised sub 2 second 0 to 60 time, 600 miles of range with a 200 kilowatt hour battery. However, with new efficiencies since the time the Roadster was announced, it's likely that the battery pack may not need to be that large. Roadster is a smaller vehicle than the Model S, a car that is capable of over 400 miles of range with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. Model S also uses the legacy 18650 batteries, and so Tesla could put in the new 4680 battery cells, which may even further help to increase power and range while reducing the weight of the Roadster. And this may be necessary for the SpaceX package that is said to use cold gas thrusters and even allow the car to temporarily fly. The real purpose of the Roadster is to truly dominate the high-end vehicle market. Elon Musk has called it giving the hardcore smackdown to gasoline cars. While the Model S Plaid has better specs than anything else out there, it's a family sedan and surprisingly, it's still too affordable. High-end customers want to be able to show off to their friends with vehicles that are slightly less attainable. And so a $200,000 plus dollar roadster would be extremely compelling to luxury buyers, but highly worrisome for companies who enjoy premium luxury prices and have been carried along thanks to their brand names, but haven't innovated enough in the EV space. Think Ferrari or Lamborghini, or even the electric Porsche Taycan. These vehicles turn into expensive bricks when a Roadster with the SpaceX package leaves them in the dust. And so Tesla will pull the high margin rug out from under many of its high end competitors which actually don't need and don't have very high volumes in this segment to begin with. This will put enormous pressure on the cash cows of the industry. Now while expensive cars may be a way for the ultra rich to store their money, there are other ways to invest during these uncertain times. With inflation at a 30-year high, diversifying your portfolio with alternative assets is more important than ever. That's why today's sponsor is Masterworks.io, a platform that lets you invest in art, a rarely talked about asset class that has proven to be a great hedge against inflation with studies showing very low correlation to the stock market. Contemporary art historically averages a 23% real return when inflation is above 3% like it is right now. That's more than four times better than traditional hedges like gold and real estate. Now traditionally, only the super wealthy have been able to invest in multi-million dollar artwork, that is until now. 
Masterworks is a revolutionary tech platform valued at over a billion dollars that allows you to purchase shares of multi-million dollar paintings by world-famous artists like Banksy, Picasso, or Monet in the same way you would buy Tesla or Apple shares. After investing in a work of art, one option is to wait for it to be sold. But what I found interesting is that Masterworks also offers a secondary market where you can trade shares directly with other investors. For example, as a conservative investor, I was looking to invest in one of the most stable artists on the platform. I decided on Picasso's Homme Assis, as Picasso has an annual appreciation of 12% a year and often leads the art market in yearly auction sales volume. As this fits my risk return profile, I simply select the amount of shares I would like to own and invest. This really is a brilliant platform that is opening the high-end art market to everyone through trust and transparency. It's no wonder over 250,000 investors have signed up. But as a result of this high demand, there is a long wait list for those who want to invest. However, I've partnered with Masterworks to provide you with a link to let you skip that wait list, which can be found in the description below. And thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. The Cybertruck has also been confirmed by Elon Musk for 2023 volume production, with Elon stating at the Giga Texas Cyber Rodeo that they're going to start manufacturing Cybertruck here next year. This is Elon's favorite vehicle and the one he's most looking forward to. He calls it CGI in real life. Now many are fooled by the simplicity of the Cybertruck's design and sharp angles. However, this is a byproduct of the engineering culture at Tesla. If you look at GM's Hummer EV or Ford's F-150 Lightning, they've essentially taken the exact same or similar body design that they had for the old Hummer and the old F-150 respectively and shoehorned in a battery. In order to do this, they likely did have to, in a sense, redesign the vehicles, similar to how Tesla learned the hard way with the original Roadster when they had to put an AC propulsion electric motor into the body of a Lotus Elise. The process was painful and the result used almost none of the AC propulsion drivetrain technology or the Lotus Elise body. Competing electric cars based off of existing vehicle bodies are more difficult to manufacture and simply can't be as efficient since they were designed with fossil fuel propellant in mind. The Cybertruck takes the opposite approach by starting with the features that Tesla wants the vehicle to have. Dent-proof exoskeleton, armor glass windows, and then they work on building the equipment to manufacture this at scale. Elon has even hinted that the vehicle would be pressurized to make it a prime candidate for the official vehicle of Mars. While this sounds insane and ridiculous, it in a sense melts the engineering and excitement together. There's no marketing needed for Tesla vehicles because the cars sell themselves. Now the mainstream media would love to see the Cybertruck fail and tries to do its best to keep poking fun at it. However, Cybertruck has potentially over a million pre-orders that's multiple times more than Ford's F-150 Lightning. During an interview with the Financial Times, Elon Musk was asked, is there a risk to lose the pickup truck segment to Ford or Rivian if you don't get the Cybertruck to market soon? But Elon flat out says no. They have orders for three years out from start of production. Elon Musk believes that the Cybertruck is the company's magnum opus. He says, I can't wait to have this baby in production. It's going to be epic. And so the engineering being packed into this vehicle will be next level. While there is a new technology curve, once Tesla overcomes these obstacles, production should eventually be much easier for this type of vehicle that doesn't require a paint shop. This is absolutely frightening for companies such as Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler, or Stellantis now, since these are the top three makers of pickup trucks in the US, which is the world's largest pickup truck market. This is also the most lucrative, as pickups have demanded higher and higher premiums over time, and the sector has all but turned into a luxury business. It's also one of the last few segments of the auto industry where the United States' is little three automakers lead and have the first, second, and third spot, although Chrysler is no longer owned by a U.S. company. Even Ford CEO Jim Farley has been taking shots at Tesla, making fun of the company while promoting the F-150 Lightning. Tesla has been quite secretive with revealing the latest Cybertruck features, but if history is any guide, they are watching competitors closely in order to trounce them when the vehicle hits production. When asked about the Cybertruck, Tesla's chief designer, Franz van Holzhausen, stated that there is no other truck, everything else fails in comparison, this is the only one you need, which seems to echo Elon Musk's excitement for the Cybertruck as the vehicle may end the multi-decade lead of Ford and General Motors in the pickup truck market. Moreover, the Tesla Semi is slated to be the third product in this massive 2023 wave of new vehicles. 
The semi has been produced in low volume up until now out of the Fremont facility. However, Fremont is lacking the tools, machinery, and the space in order to produce the Tesla semi. But now that Giga Texas has been launched, the Tesla team is preparing the necessary tooling in their brand new Giga factory to produce semi in volume. Keeping in mind that a single Tesla semi may use about 10 times as many batteries as a vehicle such as the Model 3. Now, if you thought that the Cybertruck would have little to no competition, the semi literally has none. Tesla's semi truck competitors believe that Tesla is breaking the laws of physics with its semi specs. Even General Motors, as well as others, have given up on trying to make an electric truck and will be focusing on hydrogen fuel cells. While Elon Musk calls them fuel cells, hydrogen has at least two major roadblocks. One being a complete lack of infrastructure, and the second is that the price of hydrogen is typically more than even gasoline or diesel, which will make it a difficult sell with no economic benefits. Now to be fair, when Tesla first announced the semi-truck, it appeared to rely on future battery technology, which Tesla didn't have in 2018. While the semi was delayed multiple times, its launch will coincide with the 4680 battery cell ramp up. Tesla also had time to improve the semi's design, and while we don't have all of the details yet, they may be looking at large-scale gigacasting, for instance, to save on weight. And so competitors, including Daimler, Volkswagen, and Volvo, may be caught flat-footed as they lack high-volume battery technology. Tesla's Semi will be using Tesla's high-performance nickel-based chemistry for this vehicle, which isn't something that can just be ordered in bulk from China. The popular iron-based chemistry that CATL and other companies have been ramping up simply won't cut it for a vehicle of this size. So Tesla has a major advantage here to launch a product that will reduce shipping costs for businesses and to finally test out commercial autonomous driving software in high volumes. Now the fourth Tesla product that Elon Musk is looking to produce in 2023 isn't even a vehicle at all, but it's the insane idea of the Tesla bot Optimus. Elon likely needed something that started with the letter O for his next acronym, like Elon Sexy Cars or something of the sort, which we'll have to wait and see. But the Tesla robot is usually completely ignored as some sort of joke by the company. However, Elon Musk and the Tesla team seem very serious about this product, so much so that it appears to have become a much higher priority over some of Tesla's other vehicle products even. And since it's much smaller, it should be easier to produce, use a relatively small number of batteries, and likely have large profit margins since the bot will have high utility. It will do anything that humans don't want to do. Elon Musk states that it will transform the world to a degree even greater than the cars. Optimus will obviate what an economy really means. While it will still take many years for Tesla to perfect the robot, we can see competitors such as Boston Dynamics today build robots for practical use, but that lack machine learning for visualizing the world around them and scale for mass production. SpaceX, for instance, uses Boston Dynamics' spot robot dog to navigate unsafe areas instead of humans. But with Tesla's FSD software for vehicles, they're hoping to apply a real-world vision to the robot, likely starting with use cases inside Tesla's factories. With a global labor shortage, if this pans out the way Tesla wants, it could give them an even bigger boost in manufacturing and construction speed, but will ultimately begin to replace mundane tasks done by humans before moving up the chain. Surprisingly, Elon Musk expects Optimus Subprime to have a shot at being in production for version 1.0 next year. This year, 2022, is all about scaling up to meet the demands of the upcoming wave of new products in 2023. All of these new products rely on the 4680 cell to ramp up dramatically in order to catch up to Tesla's production capabilities and provide for Tesla for years to come. But this wave is about more than just cool new products. Tesla is looking seriously at extreme scale. The auto industry has until 2023 to get their act together since this may mark the beginning of the end. Tesla is basically doubling the size of their lineup next year, pushing into twice as many market segments and with higher volume than anyone else. But more so, this doesn't stop at the auto industry. Competitors from various different sectors will need to brace themselves for what Tesla has planned for 2023 and beyond to make sure they're not in harm's way. So in what year do you think Tesla's presence will cause an existential impact to those automakers who have not made meaningful progress in electric vehicles? And do you think working on the Tesla bot today with high priority is a smart move for Tesla's long-term prospects? 
Don't forget to check out our Masterwork sponsor link in the description below. Please hit the like button and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.